what we have seen so far we uh, looked at um, that it is an rna virus with reverse transcriptase so it is called as retrovirus uh, it was uh, from chimpanzee to man this has come this virus the first case was reported in new york actually and uh, they discovered that uh, the chimpanzee to man transmission happened in, in rural africa and uh, the epidemiology global situation is 35 million people are affected millions of deaths also 0.8% adults are affected in the global situation sub saharan africa has more prevalence 1 in 20 people have uh, hiv in india the prevalence is 0.27% uh, the reservoir is actually infected people high risk groups are uh, people who have uh, multiple sex partners uh, etc homosexuals also the national aids uh, control organization is there in india national level and in state level there is uh, in state level there is uh, state aids prevention state aids prevention and control societies okay moving on we saw the morphology of the virus we saw that uh, it has some uh, envelope proteins like gp120 gp41 gp41 is fusion protein gp121 helps in binding to the receptor on the host cell then this is a reverse transcriptase these two are the identical copies of the rna <clears throat> then we saw the antigens right then we saw the non structural genes tat nef rev wif wpu all this we saw then we saw antigenic variation and diversity there are two serotypes h1 hiv1 and hiv2 usually we refer to hiv1 only <clears throat> there's lot of mutation in the uh, envelope genes okay because of which there is antigenic variation and hence it is uh, the hiv virus can escape the human uh, our host immunity and also it we cannot develop vaccines because of this antigenic variation that hiv makes now uh, hiv virus can actually be killed by uh, uh, bleach disinfected uh, or inactivated by bleach ethanol lysol formaldehyde hydrogen peroxide heating extreme ph can deactivate this virus pathogenesis we saw mode of transmission receptor attachment uh, of uh, receptor attachment of this virus to our host cell mode of transmission replication inside the host cell immunopathogenesis then we saw kinetics of immune response and opportunistic infections in pathogenesis these were the main headings hiv transmission we saw that in india the total transmission maximum is because of sexual intercourse 88% is because of <clears throat> sexual intercourse okay that is why there is a stigma to it and also there is no cure so that is what makes the stigma to hiv uh, extreme right then uh, this is where we saw the receptors <clears throat> this is the virus this is the host cell <clears throat> this gp120 binds to the cd4 and uh, cx cr4 in t helper cell in other cells it is cc r5 receptor so once these bind the fusion is brought about by this gp41 fusion protein then this nucleocapsid only this part enters the helper t cell or the other cells like the monocytes macrophages langerhans cells astrocytes keratinocytes glial cells to all these cells this nucleocapsid will enter then there is un uh, whatever unmasking whatever it uh, what is the word wait it uncoats the nucleocapsid uncoats and then what happens this uh, rna makes dna single stranded dna then it becomes double stranded dna now this double stranded dna with the help of other uh, proteins that this dna has synthesized enters this uh, nucleus of these host cells <clears throat> there it binds to the chromosome of uh, the host cell right this is called as provirus now okay now this is the provirus then it will go into clinical latency not virus is not latent the disease is not latent clinically there are no symptoms but this virus goes on replicating okay so the viral integrase enzyme will help this integration to happen the integration of the virus to the host chromosome happens because of this viral integrase enzyme okay then we saw the immunopathogenesis there is an active hiv disease or an acute retroviral syndrome where flu like symptoms will be there that's all and there's a drop in cd4 count
then there is an asymptomatic stage which can be there for many years also from months to years but this is a clinical dormancy nothing to do with the virus the virus are still replicating okay <clears throat> um here actually the immune of the body has taken over and the viremia reduces so it is asymptomatic phase but the virus are multiplying inside these uh, lymph nodes etc then comes this lymph adenopathy obviously the virus are multiplying etc so there is lymph adenopathy so here <clears throat> there is enlarged lymph nodes because that's why it is called as persistent generalized lymph adenopathy what is pgl persistent generalized lymph adenopathy but here what happens the lymph node size becomes more than 1 cm in size two or more non contiguous lymph nodes are affected and this lymph node enlargement is at least there for 3 months that is persistent generalized lymph adenopathy this is followed by symptomatic hiv infection symptomatic hiv infection means what now some symptoms start coming what happens unexplained diarrhea mild opportunistic infections like oral thrush weight loss fatigue night sweats all this start coming in this symptomatic hiv infection it's called as aids related complex a uh, arc as of now this person is still not called as an aids patient final stage of hiv infection is the aids which is called as the acquired immunodeficiency syndrome this is the end stage of hiv so an hiv person if he is infected with hiv virus we should not say that he has aids only if the disease progresses and he gets aids then it is called as aids here the cd4 count will be less than 200 cells per micro liter okay so basically there is high viral load less cd4 count the lymphoid tissues are totally destroyed and they are replaced with fibrous tissue lot of opportunistic infections which we will give you the names then <clears throat> there can be neoplasias and even hiv encephalopathy touch your head and see hiv encephalopathy also can be there so how does the body react actually to uh, the hiv virus right there will be viremia and p24 antigenemia this is obviously what the virus does to us but what does our body do there is humoral response our body makes antibodies like igm igg iga etc right and there is a uh, window period that is from the time that the person gets infected till the time that the antibodies appear in the serum this is called as window period this can be around 3 to 12 weeks so the bodies that uh, antibodies that we make are antibodies to the gag protein antibody to the p24 right it then after that the antibody to p24 goes on declining after some time something like this okay so we make a lot of anti hiv antibodies but the problem is the virus is destroying our t lymphocytes that is where the problem comes right it is destroying the immune cells itself that is why the person's immunity becomes less and he starts getting lot of opportunistic infections so that is somewhere at least in pathogenesis is it written here that the cd4 count cd4 cells rupture and all that that's very important actually the immunity of the person goes down so he doesn't actually die because of the virus he dies because of other opportunistic infections so the opportunistic infections that come for a aids person will be like bacteria tuberculosis virus like herpes simplex mucosal lesions then uh, cytomegalovirus retinitis fungus like candida pneumocystis xerovaceae parasites like cryptosporidium parvum diarrhea it will cause toxoplasma encephalitis okay so this person will get a lot of opportunistic infections actually here they have not mentioned there can be neoplasms also like kaposi sarcoma etc maybe they are not infections but they are uh, complications due to aids right kaposi sarcoma other lymphomas where will they explain all this hold on actually they are explaining all this in clinical staging let's finish the clinical staging guys kaposi sarcoma is basically patches patches of abnormal tissue to grow under the skin lining of mouth nose throat etc hold on 
let us do one thing let us look at the classification then we'll go to lab, lab diagnosis okay let us look at this clinical staging cdc and who clinical staging let us look at these cdc is center of disease control however we are not looking at the classification given by them let us look at the classification given by who guys <coughs> In this, there are only four stages. Okay, let's look at that. Let's start with the WHO clinical staging, guys. Clinical stage one, guys. This guy will have asymptomatic <clears throat> HIV infection and generalized, persistent generalized lymphadenopathy, which we have already discussed. Correct? Now, let's move on to clinical stage two. In clinical stage 2, guys, we have uh, unexplained weight loss, recurrent respiratory tract infections, herpes zoster, oral ulcers, nail infection, fungal nail infection, etc. Coming to stage 3, here again there is severe uh, weight loss, right? Weight loss was there in that also. But weight loss here is more than 10%. More than 10%. In stage 2, it was less than 10 percent okay then this person has unexplained chronic diarrhea persistent fever oral candidiasis see whenever this person gets oral candidiasis stage 3 hairy leukoplakia what is this hairy leukoplakia this is a white patch okay oral that is in the mouth all right white patch and it is caused by Epstein-Barr virus, okay, usually seen in uh, AIDS patients, right? So basically by the side of tongue, a white patch caused by Epstein-Barr virus. So this will indicate indicate clinical stage 3 according to WHO. Tuberculosis also stage 3. So remember oral hairy leukoplakia, oral candidiasis, pulmonary tuberculosis, all these are Stage 3, greater than 10% weight loss, severe weight loss, stage 3. Severe bacterial infection, stage 3, right? Then, acute necrotizing ulcerative stomatitis. Ulcerative stomatitis, gingivitis and periodontitis. All this, then unexplained anemia. This person can have anemia also. Diarrhea greater than one month, unexplained chronic, persistent fever greater than one month. Just go back to clinical stage 3 and see what you can mark. Herpes will be stage 2. Less than 10% weight loss is uh, stage 2. Okay. Then... Nail infection is stage 2. Sinusitis, tonsillitis, pharyngitis, otitis, media, ear infection, stage 2. Next, let's move on to stage 4. Okay. So, stage 4, you have HIV wasting syndrome, like slim disease. It is characterized by Profound weight loss that is greater than 10% again. Chronic diarrhea greater than 1 month. Prolonged unexplained fever 1 month. Same thing what you have seen in the previous part, right? Then, then guys, there will be bacterial opportunistic infections like what? Pulmonary tuberculosis, extra pulmonary tuberculosis here. Pulmonary tuberculosis, they are saying is stage 3. Extra pulmonary tuberculosis, they are saying is stage 4. Okay, then uh, non-typhoidal salmonellosis. What the hell is that? Then you have viral opportunistic infections like uh, herpes simplex, <clears throat> cytomegalovirus and all that. Then you have fungal opportunistic infections like uh, pneumocystis, zeruvaci, <clears throat> esophageal candidiasis, cryptococcus, meningitis, all this. Okay, just see where you saw oral candidiasis with stage. <clears throat> oral candidiasis is stage 3, remember. But uh, the other candidiasis, esophageal candidiasis is stage 4. Esophageal candidiasis is stage 4. Then uh, moving on, parasitic opportunistic infections. Toxoplasma encephalitis. 
chronic intestinal isosporiasis leishmaniasis cryptosporidiosis all these things are coming then coming to neoplasia neoplasia is stage 4 remember if the person gets neoplasia like um, kaposi sarcoma we showed you the uh, photo no we didn't show you hold on this is the kaposi sarcoma photo so this if the person gets he's in stage 4 aids um, uh, means he can be in stage 4 aids if he has aids then it will be stage 4 or if he has hiv infection so, sorry then it is a stage 4 then the person can get lymphoma okay he can get non hodgkin's lymphoma b cell lymphoma cerebral lymphoma i don't know what the cerebral lymphoma is strange right cerebral b cell and non hodgkin hodgkin right so neoplasms they will ask you definitely the neoplasms that a <clears throat> aids patient will get cerebr uh, you should say kaposi sarcoma lymphoma remember this photo for kaposi sarcoma then last thing other conditions other conditions uh, that uh, direct these will be direct hiv induced there will be hiv encephalopathy then there will be symptomatic hiv associated nephropathy or cardiomyopathy okay symptomatic hold on symptomatic hiv associated nephropathy or cardiomyopathy so we are done with uh, the clinical classification clinical staging of hiv you can write this along with pathogenesis itself okay so in this video we looked at the clinical staging of hiv stage 1 where there is asymptomatic infection gpl that is uh, persistent sorry pgl persistent generalized lymphadenopathy uh clinical stage 2 there is unexplained weight loss less than 10% herpes zoster infection nail infection all this you should write nail infection a <clears throat> uh, respiratory tract infection recurrent re respiratory tract infection then stage 3 is uh, weight loss greater than 10% diarrhea greater than 1 month persistent fever 1 month actually the same thing they have put in stage 4 also oral candidiasis then hairy leukoplakia that is by the patchy uh, white patch by the side of the tongue caused by epstein barr virus pulmonary tuberculosis is still stage 3 if it becomes extra pulmonary tuberculosis they are calling it as stage 4 then uh, esophageal candidiasis becomes stage 4 then um, what happened fungal infections viral infections parasitic infections neoplasms like uh, kaposi sarcoma can happen other conditions uh, like hiv encephalopathy cardiomyopathy nephropathy blah 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 all the pathies okay so we are done with uh, the clinical staging of hiv in the next video we will look at the lab diagnosis of hiv please come back for the next video bye bye